Hello and welcome to my vlogs from my trip to Normandy. If you haven't seen part one, where I drive from England to France via the Eurotunnel to the village of Le bec and go shopping for French antiques, then you will find the video linked in the description box below. So it's just the next day, I've just gotten ready and I'm about to go down for breakfast. I'm looking forward to see what they have there. I hope they'll have like some French pastries and some fruit, maybe that'd be really nice. Um, and I've got this dress on. And yeah, like I said, my plan for today is in the morning to walk around the village and go to the local abbey and then in the afternoon to go to the chateau. So it's going to be um, a packed day and I'm really looking forward to starting. So I've just had breakfast and it was amazing. The host set out a table just for me with a beautiful spread of jams, yogurt, a fruit salad that had like a mint, kiwi, pear, banana, fresh orange juice, coffee, croissants, baguettes, bread, butter, and madeleines. And oh, it was lush, like it was actually beautiful. And the table was set up on the um, veranda or greenhouse area kind of thing at the back of the house. Um, I guess conservatory, I should say. And um, there was a view of the garden and it was raining, but it was so peaceful. He played classical music and there's also an American couple staying at the B&B, so it's just us. And I was kind of chatting to them a bit and yeah, it was a lovely morning. And now I'm walking to the Abbey and I'm going to go and visit the Abbey. And it's just so peaceful because the village is like empty. Um, it's just birdsong and it's so beautiful. Luckily it stopped raining, so um, it'll be okay to walk around, but it's just... <laughs> I feel like I'm in heaven, it's so peaceful and I feel like this rest is just what I needed so I'm looking forward to exploring the Abbey. I'm at the Abbey and I wanted to come on a guided tour because they do guided tours at half ten and that way you can see the inside as well but I'm the only person here so they're not going to do the guided tour because they said that they don't do it if there's only one person if there's not enough people to do it so I'm just going to wander around myself which is fine because it's still beautiful and I can still explore the grounds and everything so yeah <laughs> that's the situation. Bec Abbey, originally known as the Abbey of Our Lady of Bec, is a Benedictine monastery and is famous for being the most influential abbey of the Anglo-Norman Kingdom during the 12th century. There is a stream, or a beck, that runs through the grounds and that gives both the abbey and the village their names. Founded in 1034 by the knight Saint Herluan, who the village is named after, the abbey went on to house 163 monks and Pope Alexander II even attended school here. The influence of Beck Abbey was not restricted only to France, but extended well into England. Lanfranc of Pavia, a prior and master of the monastic school, famous for his lectures, left the abbey in 1062 to become the Archbishop of Canterbury. 
Later, following the Norman invasion of England and the victory at the Battle of Hastings in 1066, followers of William the Conqueror supported the Abbey and enriched it with properties across England. A good example of this is the London suburb of Tooting Beck, which still bears its original name derived from the Abbey that owned the land. Today, visitors to the Abbey can buy products made by monks from this Abbey and other Abbeys across France, which is a creative way to support their work. They produce jams, preserves, biscuits, wine cider, a range of healthcare products, artwork, ceramics and beeswax candles, to name a few, with everything made naturally and supporting a good cause. I have quite a bit of time until I need to go to the chateau because my ticket isn't until 3 um, and it's about 11 now, so I'm just walking around the countryside a little bit. Um, looking at the Normandy houses, traditional timber framed houses, they're so beautiful and they've got such beautifully kept gardens as well. Um, and the view this way is just stunning of the hills. The village is just at the bottom of this hill so I'm literally right above the village but I'm just walking around a little bit and um, just relaxing because it's nice to go on holidays where you're sightseeing all the time and you're rushing around like doing a lot because it's nice to be stimulated as in that way but sometimes it's nice to just do nothing as well so I mean do nothing I've still got quite a lot of sightseeing today with the abbey and the chateau but you know what I mean just <laughs> taking it slow also the guy at the abbey said that if I come back at 12 30 then he'll take me in to see the cloisters because basically since I was the only one who came well there were a few people actually came after me but there weren't enough people to do the guided tour but he told me if I go back at 12 30 he'll take me inside anyway so I might pop back in before getting to the chateau because it'd be cool to see the inside as well this house I was just walking down and I realized how weird it is because at the edge it gets very thin and pointy. I wonder what it looks like from the inside. Strange. <laughs> So I just stopped for a cup of tea at the cutest little tea room that was with like I'm located in a beautiful garden with roses and oh, it was so idyllic and I had a green tea flavoured with fruits and rose and lilac and it was really nice but now it's time to head back to see the cloisters in the abbey. out of the abbey now and oh my gosh I'm so happy that the really kind man at um, the welcome desk offered to give me like a private tour of the cloisters and the staircase and because I told him I'm an architecture student he was telling me about like a bit about the history and the architecture and for example the staircase oh my gosh it's incredible and it's held up like a vaulted so there's nothing holding it up it's not integrated into the walls or anything it's literally just 
like mathematics that holds it up and it's incredible like the weight of the stones on each other so I'm just blown away <laughs> and it's so nice to just bump into sweet people like that who offer you know to help you out and show you around and tell you more about the history of the place it was so inspiring <laughs> And that's one of the things that I love about travelling so much as well because sometimes when you watch the news it's a bit depressing and it makes you just lose hope in the world but travelling you meet so many amazing people, such kind, sweet, good-hearted people and it just makes you believe in the inherent goodness of the human race that despite everything there are good people out there and that you can meet such kind people. Afterwards, it was time to make my way to the Château de Chambre de Bataille, a Baroque castle built in the 17th century for the Maréchal de Crequy. He was exiled from Paris in 1650, and so built himself this chateau between 1653 to 1665 to become the new home of the de Merondonc family. Not a bad location to be exiled to, wouldn't you agree? I'm so happy because the weather was supposed to be really bad all day, it was supposed to rain all day and be cloudy, but blue skies, the sun has come out and it's actually really pleasant to walk around the gardens, so I'm thrilled and they're really pretty, they're like a classic Jardin à la Française, you know, all neat and pristine and trimmed and symmetrical, lots of lines of symmetry and it's like all lining up with the central axis, like really classic French gardens, but really beautiful and I feel like it's quite a nice time of year to come because the gardens are really good in June, all the flowers and everything and you can see the pears and apples growing and whatnot, but there's not many tourists, I think there's like one tour group that I've seen walking around but I'm just avoiding them and walking around where it's empty and it's really lovely. During the French Revolution, as was the case with many chateaux in France, the chateau was raided and the furniture sold, leaving it empty and neglected. Recently the Chateau de Chambre de Bataille was bought in 1992 by the famous designer Jacques Garcia to gather his collection of art objects, most of which are of royal origin. He was responsible for completely transforming the grounds and breathing new life into the property. He created the formal French gardens at the rear of the chateau, inspired by sketches of the original garden, which gave him an idea of the placement of the terrace, the broderie and the bosquet, and the proportions of the squares of Apollo and Diana. As well as recreating the original gardens, he took creative freedom in redesigning other areas of the garden, whilst maintaining the overall atmosphere. His work is recognised by the French Ministry of Culture by achieving a place on the list of notable gardens of France. So I've just come out of the house tour and unfortunately I was not allowed to take photos or film inside the house which is really annoying because I would have loved to have been able to share it with you but honestly it was incredible. Like if you're ever coming to Normandy I would recommend coming to the Chateau de Chambre de Bataille because it's just it was mind-blowingly beautiful and apparently um, the interiors are not all completely original because um, the house is still kind of lived in and the people who live here have done it up again and it's um, by this famous um, designer, I can't remember the name but I'll put it um, in the video and it was just incredible and I'll try to maybe, because I bought a book with pictures of it and I'll, put, I'll film the book or take some pictures of the photos in the book to be able to give you a taste of what it's like but it's a place that you should definitely add to your list and visit because I've been to many chateau and castles, I've visited a lot of them so I'm able to compare and that is amongst the top, it's definitely one of the best that I've ever been to, I'm just speechless really. Thanks to Jacques Garcia's incredible talent, the interiors of the chateau have been magnificently restored, taking on a palatial character, and today the upstairs apartments are even considered amongst the most beautiful enfilade in France. The interiors are designed in the 18th century style, and their opulence and beauty draw on the words of Charles Maurice de Talleyrand Perigord, he who has not lived in the 18th century before the revolution does not know the sweetness of life. Downstairs you can find the original kitchens, which evoke a time of extravagance when a large team of chefs and maids were required to put on the grand dinner parties and balls at the chateau. The rows of copper pans, jelly moulds and china plates, which today gather dust, were essential when life revolved around pleasure and enjoyment. Charles Maurice de Talleyrand Perigord linked the 18th century to satisfying physical appetites, intellectual and moral refinement of all pleasures. He even wrote that if the 17th century was the great age of glories, the 18th century was that of indigestion. I would have loved to be able to see the hustle and bustle in the kitchens during their heyday. I 
So the weather has suddenly completely changed. There's lots of really dark clouds. And I was walking in a minute ago, there was thunder that was really loud. So I'm <laughs> luckily I'm done with seeing everything. I've seen all of the garden. So I can head back to the car because it was actually a bit scary because it went on for a really long time and it was really loud. So I'm worried that it's just gonna start pouring down with rain because there's just so many dark clouds. <laughs> Okay, that was literally crazy because I was telling you that I heard thunder and there were really dark clouds just as I was leaving the chateau. And then I got in the car and I started driving and then boom, it started chucking it down with the rain. It was crazy. Like it was hitting the windscreen so hard. Um, and I was just so thankful that I was not caught in that. I literally left at just the right moment. So I'm back at the village now and believe it or not in the village it's really sunny so I guess the clouds are moving along and here it must have passed through because everything's really wet but it's not raining anymore so I'm lucky and I haven't eaten since breakfast at 8.30am. It is currently 5.30 so I am starving and um, I'm probably going to go out somewhere in the village for a meal. They have some quite cute restaurants. I don't know what I'll have because I had crepes yesterday and um, a galette so... I don't know if I'll go back to the creperie or if I'll go to an actual restaurant. I'll see what's open because I know that not everything is open every day since it's such a small place. So I think they take turns opening. So I'll have to have a look around. But that is the plan. So it's the next day. Yesterday I had an amazing dinner last night. Um, I w when I came back from the chateau, because I hadn't eaten all day since breakfast, I think it was about five o'clock and I was really hungry, but all the restaurants were closed. Um, so I ended up going out at seven because that's when they opened to eat dinner. And I got an earth and sea salad, which is basically a salad with foie gras and some duck and some prawns and um, like a salmon rillette, which is a bit like a salmon pate thing. And it was really good. And there was also some little um, baguette toasted with like um, warm goat's cheese on the top. Oh, it was so good. Um, so I really enjoyed that. It was nice to sit out. It was raining, but I was sat outside. They had like a covered terrace area and it was quite cozy to like hear the rain pattering. But today the weather is so good. which is really good because if I'm going by the sea then I want to have good weather. Hopefully we can go on the beach if it's warm enough. Um, so I'm about to go down for breakfast now. I've already packed all my stuff into the car, my suitcase and whatnot. So that, um, after breakfast I'll be ready to leave straight away to go to Fécond. My friends are going to get there about nine, but I'm probably going to leave at nine because breakfast is served at 8.30 and I thought I might as well eat before I leave because it'd be a shame if it's included. Um, so that's fine, I'll probably get there about 10 because I think it's an hour to drive there, which is fine because I'll have time to settle in and then I'll arrive and then I can't wait to spend some time with them. So yes, I'm about to head down now. The next three days spent in Fécon were bliss. I didn't film everything I did because I was with my friends, but I loved exploring the town, which is in an idyllic location surrounded by pale white cliffs and pebble beaches. There was so much to do, admiring the boats in the port and walking along the cliffs on the coastline, exploring caves and taking a dip in the sea. And as a group of architecture students, of course we were impressed by the Grand Benedictine Abbey. Most importantly, it was a time to unwind, cooking meals together and passing the evenings playing board games. I am so grateful to have such a sweet group of friends and to have had the opportunity to travel and visit them, as well as to explore new places. I hope you enjoyed following me on my trip, and if you did, please like this video and subscribe to my channel to join me on more adventures. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!